Well, I've been uh, home brewing now for over 40 years and over the years I've made wines, beer, cider. Um, I now just tend to specialise in scrumpy cider. These last few years um, I make still scrumpy, um, which is I add a, a stabiliser after it's finished fermenting and put a stabiliser in the cider which prevents, it kills the yeast and it prevents a second fermentation which you get a nice still cider. That's what I tend to make now. But what I'm going to make today is something I've never ever made before and that is cranberry cider. And I'm going to use exactly the same method that I use to make my scrumpy cider. It's just that I'm going to use two litres of cranberry, cranberry juice and two litres of apple juice. Like I say, um, exactly the same method as I use to, uh, to make my, my ordinary scrumpy cider. I'll just go through the basic things you'll need. Demijohn, funnel, you need an airlock, um, you've got sugar, which is 12 ounces of sugar I use to 4 litres. That gives me um, a cider which is about 8 to 9 percent in strength, which is, you know, if you're going to make a, a decent cider, best to, you know, if it gives it a good, good kick. So that's 12 ounces of sugar, gives me about 8 to 9 percent. Um, got your yeast nutrients, you don't have to use that. But it's worthwhile using it and of course you've got your yeast um, and I use cider yeast. You can use only wine yeast or champagne yeast but I, I use the uh, cider yeast and that's uh, I think that's a five, five gram sachet to four litres. You don't need to use all that just use half of it and you've got your other half for your next brew which I've got half sachet in this little container here. Like I say you can use all that if you want but you don't need to just use half of it. So that's it, that's the basics. Right let's get making the cranberry cider. First thing that goes in is the 12 ounces of sugar. As I say that'll end up about eight, about eight to nine percent strength. For that to go in. I'll put the uh, yeast, well, put the yeast nu nu nutrient in now. Like I say, you don't have to use this, but it is worthwhile putting some in. Gives your yeast. Your yeast some nutrients as it says unpack so that's uh, one teaspoon that's a half a teaspoon by the way so one teaspoon of the yeast nutrients uh, right cranberry juice like I say four litre two litre cranberry juice and two litre of uh, apple juice now a tip when you're using these cartons, when you've opened the carton and you're pouring it into your demijohn, is just get a knife and make another hole, and then you get a nice smooth pour, it doesn't glug. As I say, never ever made cranberry cider, so let me give this one a go in with the other carton. Make your hole. And once you put two litres in, like I've just done there, give it a good old shake. Back with the uh, funnel, and then in goes the apple juice. Same again with these cartons, hole at the back there. A nice smooth pour. Now 
Now then, I'm at this stage, for the first few days, um, I only put four litres in, say one litre, because the reason being, if I had put the full four litres in, the level of the cider or whatever you wine or whatever you're making will be right up here near the neck. And sometimes the first couple of days you can get a very vigorous fermentation and it'll start frothing. And if you put the full four litres in your demijohn with your airlock on, it'll start frothing, it'll come up through your airlock and it'll be you know froth all over the place. And also it means there's air getting into your cider. So leaving out, only putting three litres in, if I do get a, a vigorous fermentation, you don't always, but if I do, there's plenty of room for the froth and the foam to come up to about here. It won't be coming up through your airlock. Um, so, like I say, give it two or three days and then pour the last litre in. So, oh, just one more thing to do, and that's put your yeast in. As I say, what I've got in here is half five gram of cider yeast. You don't have to use the whole sachet, half of that is plenty. So that's the yeast going in. Again, give it a good shake. And that's it. It's as simple as that. On with the airlock. And I put that in a nice warm place, which is the airing cupboard. It's one of the best places. Um, and like I say, if I do get a vigorous fermentation to start with, it's only the first few days, plenty of room for that from or froth and what have you. And once it starts calming down, if it doesn't, all being well, but if it does, once it starts to calm down, I'll put it in the last litre. So that's it. That's how to make cranberry cider. Simple, easy. And I will be doing a follow-up video to this of the tasting once the fermentation has died down and stopped. Um, I'll put a stabiliser in which will kill the yeast because I want a still cider. I don't want a fizzy cider so it will kill the yeast and then when I bottle it um, you will get a secondary fermentation get a nice still cider and I'll leave it for a, about a week or so. You can, as soon as you finish fermenting, you can start drinking your cider, but it will age. It'll take, taste much nicer. So, um, like I say, when I uh, give it a few days, I'll pop in the last litre, let it ferment out, and I'll put my stabiliser in and I'll bottle it, and then it'll clear the yeast will drop down to the bottom of the, the bottle. I'll leave it for about a week or so and I'll do another video of the tasting because I've never made cranberry cider before. So looking forward to tasting that. So that's it. Thanks for watching and if you've got any questions or anything about home brewing or check out my other videos how to use hydrometers and how bottling and about all sorts of things anyway if you're interested. So that's it. Simple.